Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today, Divine Presence, Part 2. From the Mother, only the love that is based on the Divine Presence can remain unmixed and present no obstacle to the sadhana. 17 January 1934 What is real meditation then? Mother, it is an active and deliberate concentration on the Divine Presence and a sustained, alert contemplation of that sublime reality. The outer nature is always full of imperfections until it is transformed by the Divine Presence. But it is wrong to let these things depress you. 4th May 1934 Question Mother, what is it that will help me always remember that I am living a spiritual life? Mother The awareness of the Divine Presence in all things and always you have said in your conversations that to prepare yourself for the yoga, one must first of all be conscious. Mother, to be conscious of the Divine Presence in us is our goal. Question. I don't see how I can be conscious from the beginning. Mother. I have not said conscious of the Divine Presence. I have said conscious. That means one does not live in total ignorance of what happens within oneself. Mother, if the psychic always feels the Divine Presence, why does the human being cry and lament the lack of this Presence? Mother, I have already told you that it is because the contact between the outer consciousness and the psychic consciousness is not well established. He in whom this contact is well established is always happy. It is certainly not with such a state of mind that you can hope to find the Divine Presence. Far from seeking to fill your heart with frivolities in order to divert it, you must, with a great obstinacy, empty it of everything, absolutely everything, both great and small, so that the power of that great emptiness may attract the marvelous presence. One must know how to pay this supreme grace the price it deserves. The true spiritual life begins when one is in communion with the divine in the psychic. When one is conscious of the Divine Presence in the psychic and in constant communion with the psychic, then the spiritual life begins, not before, the true spiritual life. When one is united with one's psychic being and conscious of the Divine Presence, and receives the impulses for one's action from this Divine Presence, and when the will has become a conscious collaborator with the Divine Will, 
That is the starting point. Before that, one may be an aspirant to the spiritual life, but one doesn't have a spiritual life. Question. Sweet Mother, I would like to have the explanation of a sentence Sri Aurobindo has said somewhere. Materially, you are nothing. Spiritually, you are everything. Mother. That means that it is the spirit, the spiritual consciousness, and the divine presence which give to life all its value. That without this spiritual consciousness and divine presence, life has no value. The same holds true for the individual. Whatever his material capacities and the material conditions in which he lives, his only worth is that of the divine presence and the spiritual consciousness in him. And so, from the point of view of the truth of things, a man who has no material possessions and no remarkable capacities or possibilities, but who is conscious of his psychic being and united with the divine in him, is infinitely greater than a ruler upon earth or a millionaire who possesses considerable material power but is unconscious of his psychic being. From the point of view of the truth, it is like that. This is what Sri Aurobindo means. No apparent and outer things have any true value. The only thing which is valuable is the divine consciousness and union with the Spirit. Sweet Mother, how can one feel the Divine Presence constantly? Mother, why not? But how can one do it? Mother, but I am asking why one should not feel it. Instead of asking the question how to feel it, I ask the question, what do you do that you don't feel it? There is no reason not to feel the Divine Presence. Once you have felt it, even once, you should be capable of feeling it always, for it is there. It is a fact. It is only our ignorance which makes us unaware of it. But if we become conscious, why should we not always be conscious? Why forget something one has learned? When one has had the experience why forget it? It is simply a bad habit. That's all. You see, there is something which is a fact. That's to say, it is. But we are unaware of it and do not know it. But after we become conscious and know it, why should we still forget it? Does it make sense? It's quite simply because we are not convinced that once one has met the Divine, one can't forget Him anymore. We are, on the contrary, full of stupid ideas which say, Oh yes, it's very well once like that, but the rest of the time it will be as usual. So there is no reason why it may not begin again. But if we know that, We did not know something. We were ignorant. Then the moment we have the knowledge, I am sincerely asking, how can one manage to forget? One might not know something. That is a fact. There are countless things one doesn't know. But the moment one knows them, the minute one has the experience, how can one manage to forget? Within yourself, you have the Divine Presence, you know nothing about it, for all kinds of reasons. But still the chief reason is that you are 
in a state of ignorance. Yet suddenly, by a clicking of circumstances, you become conscious of this divine presence. That is, you are before a fact. It is not imagination. It is a fact. It's something which exists. Then how do you manage to forget it once you have known it? 